Okay guys, let's take a look inside the VivoBook S15 with the MX250 and see what's going on in here. Now this is the ScreenPad 2.0 unit, so I'll be interested to see what's on the other side of this panel. I will pause this video and resume once this panel's off. Okay, back cover's removed. Six short, four long screws. Uh, the three across the middle and the one directly in the top are longer than the others. Uh, we have a 4GB uh, 2666 speed RAM in the motherboard already. It does appear that the other four are soldered. The heat pipe is a little bit smallish. Um, I've seen this design recently from a couple other manufacturers, mostly um, some HPs, and they're definitely not as thick as this one or as wide. Um, so this is a, that's a good sign. Uh, the power brick is a 90 watt adapter, which gives me hope that it could be the 25 watt version of the MX250. Um, we're gonna go ahead and take this out. Uh, the SSD is right here. I am going to try to see what drive Asus put in here for us. Let's see if we can't. Okay, they got a pretty good chunk of thermal stuff at the bottom. Okay, so we've loaded up a crucial uh, 8 gig dim uh, which we have put in there is a second SATA not sure if this is NVMe but um, there's definitely a, or sorry um, M2 slot uh, we're gonna stick a another 256 gig drive in there um, and this is interesting so it actually comes in a small bag and Asus has gone the extra mile here um, they have also taped on both sides of this drive, so we'll have to look at it inside of Windows, unfortunately. Uh, and they slid it into this thermal pouch, so they really didn't want this drive getting hot or having the heat escape the area that it's in. I'm gonna pause this for one more second, put all this stuff back, and when I turn the video back on, we'll probably be back in the on the Windows side, uh, ready to look, take a look at the GPU and do some benchmarks. Okay, we're back. And for anyone who was wondering, it was a 3640 mAh battery. Uh, it is booting now, or should be anyway. And I do see the power light on, so that's a good sign. The RAM upgrade is complete. It should be now 12 gigs of DDR4 at 2666. I'm not sure what the soldered or onboard RAM speed is. If it is only locked to 2400, uh, I may remove that and put a 2400 chip in there just because. Now let's go ahead and check out. So the everything is still working that's a good sign let's turn on mouse button okay and let's see what we've got so we've got there they are the two drives the os drive and the local drive now i'll need to f format whatever i had on there uh, let's probably take a look through those files later but yeah they are both showing up so this essentially has 512 gigs of storage now uh, which is good. Let's go ahead and download CPU-Z and GPU-Z and finally take a look at that GPU. So I'll pause this and we will be back when those are downloaded. Okay, we're back. So, uh, good news. Uh, this does actually register as a 2666 module for RAM. We'll start on this side first. Uh, this is showing that 2666 is indeed the RAM speed, as well as the timings are pretty good. Uh, it only shows, it does show the memory here as being 12 gigabytes, although here 
it shows only as module size eight and it says ranks single. I'm not sure uh, if that is for dual channel or not. I can't tell exactly yet, but it uh, does appear that everything is, is functioning fine. Um, in Intel processors aren't as affected by the single versus dual channel RAM as <clears throat> uh, AMDs are currently, so it's not a bad thing. The Intel i7 Whiskey Lake is showing up at the 4 to 46 multiplier, uh, 8 megs of 16-way uh, L3 cache, and uh, you know we're we're looking pretty good so far over here on the GPU. We have even better news. This is the 10DE 1D13. 25 watt variant as far as I can tell this is the full um, 1582 megahertz boost clock uh, with the full 1500 megahertz memory uh, I'm going to go ahead and open up the small render to try to see if oh Yes, we have to download some some drivers. I there's not too much bloat on here from Asus themselves, but I, I would still like to get a clean version of Windows going. Although um, I I checked on my other Asus ROG machine for the drivers for this machine, and so far there are no drivers for this. So installing a fresh version of Windows if you are a super early adopter is not yet an option. Now uh, we're gonna run some quick benchmarks. I'm gonna do a fire strike and a performance test. So I'll be back with those results. As you can see there, it's the 25.3 gigapixels, the 38 or 36 gigapixels, and the bandwidth is the uh, optimal 48 um, 48 gigabytes per second over the 40 on the regular MX150. So all in all, pretty impressed uh, that this is the larger GPU, if you will. Uh, it's not the cut down 10 watt version. Now we'll just gotta see, see how it does. We'll be back with some benchmarks.